Welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live show recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. I thought I'd just go through uh, some of my colour books um, and explain what water-based medium I use for different pages and why. Um, most of them, apart from the Harry Potter, I use water-based medium. And most of them I either use in two forms. I either use in their original form, so that's the hydrus in the little bottles. I use gouache, which is in watercolour trays. I use the neos, either scratch from the crayon or depending on where I am and what page I'm doing I either use them from here so I've got my watercolours and um, my peerless are always used from here my Derwent pencils are nearly always used from here Derwent watercolour pencils my Derwent ink tens are nearly always used from here. And graphy tint used from there. And I have now got my near colour twos, which I think I've got 112. They're used from here. Ganzai Tambi watercolours are always used from here. Hydras. I have in different places but when I'm travelling I use from here and then at the back I've got some professional watercolours which I've made a little palette and I was explaining about the uh, the water Winter Newton Cotman they dry this is tube um, they are the student grain Dermot watercolour Cotman series in the little tubes and they've dried. The professional Windsor Newton ones always stay, they've dried but they're, they're a bit tacky and they're always a messier and they've got, um, they're okay but I've had to build this little kind of frame round so that I can allow them to dry out properly. They take a lot longer um, and that's because of the binder. But they're in there and there's got a lot of colour in there, so they're in there. But I, I actually kind of like this, this way. And then you just kind of dampen a little space and you can use them. So I like my little watercolour book um, and it's very easy with a, a water brush. And I found the best one for me to keep it the driest is the Derwent 1 and 2 um, watercolour brushes. And that's because... The first one is a small, a small one, and then this number two is a bit bigger for a bigger space. But I find if you use a baby wipe and you kind of take most of the moisture off and have it barely damp, your pages don't buckle. And being a chunky pen, if you've got poorly hands, they they work really well. So I usually use them in different ways. And that reflects on the books. So this was one of my first, I think. And I made... Didn't they have handy? I bought three watercolours in the tube. And that's these three here. Which is a lemon yellow, a Lizzie crimson and the cerulean blue and I made and there's a video about colour wheel I made this colour wheel um, from these three colours so I had a cold yellow uh, I mean this is a, a year ago probably now a cold blue and, and a warm pinky red a lizard crimson, cerulean blue and lemon yellow and from those three colours I made 
um, a purple, but it's a bit of a dull purple because I wasn't very good at making French ultramarine. Um, a, a warm purpley blue, I couldn't get that quite right, so my purples are not as bright. But I got some nice greens and some oranges and I made a cadmium red. Not an official cadmium red, but I made a cold red. So I made a warm blue, a cold red and an orange. And I made a warm yellow and a purpley blue. And then I made the green, the orange and the purple. And this palette here is this colour scheme here. So you can see the purple's not that good and that's the caterpillar. But I really like using the watercolours in a colour book and the only reason it's wet is because some Egypt didn't stop at the roundabout and um, we nearly had a bump so I spilt my tablespoon of water but everything else is done with just a barely damp brush. Now this particular one was done with a rigger and that's why we've got watercolour effects. So we've got dark and then pale and it looks almost like a watercolour. They're very delicate. And I like that way of working. Um, and then I got some professional watercolours and I did the same again. I actually got six colours because I think you need six colours. You need two yellows, two blues and two reds. So there's a cad red, Elysian crimson, cerulean blue, French ultramarine, lemon yellow and cadmium yellow. And from those six I made a good purple, some nice greens and a gorgeous orange. So six colours is best. And from these professional colours I coloured in the bunnies. This is my first page with professional colours, professional watercolours. And I kind of really like that way of working and I buy the riggers in threes. So I have, um, these are the thickest ones for the biggest pages, but my favourite ones um, are actually out. So I was using these at day. The graduate De La Rowney ones are quite good and I use a one, two and a three. And you always need to dunk them to get the correct, you can see, you can see what they are. And then I always have a graduate De La Rowney liner, 10 zero, and that's fine. So what that's giving you is a fat, a medium and a thin. And just get them in order. My hands are really pants today. And the liner is just there for some tiny spaces or a bit of a, if you wanted to do the highlights in gouache, you would use a little tiny one for really small spaces. There's some really tiny, tiny little toadstools. So that's quite a nice little set. And this should do you quite easily a page like this where you've got a big space and you've got a tiny space. And I use those when I use either paints from here or paints from here. And if it's just damp, it will pick up colour in any water-based medium, if it's a pencil or a crayon. As long as it's water-based, you can always reconstitute it back into colour. And, and I do like that way of working, but sometimes um, my hands are not very well. Now, although you're just stroking the colour, you still kind of got to manoeuvre this a little bit. Um, so the, the fastest way to do it, although you don't always get a watercolour effect. Um, I think this is another watercolour palette I was using. Um, so I switch between my riggers and my Dermot water brushes. So, if anybody wants to know how my hands are, if I'm using my riggers, my hands are okay, and if I'm using these, they're not. <laughs> that would be the guess. Now, this is this is a, a watercolour, um, and again, I haven't moved those out. 
um, because I quite like this set. So if I'm going, oh, pardon. that's the disadvantage of having three of those. For some reason, this one's gone really sticky. I don't know why. Uh, these are Cotman watercolours. And these... Yeah, I don't know why I've got sticky. It's, it was cold yesterday. So I'm going to leave them open, actually, to dry. Because I haven't used them in a while. And I'll show you the page I was doing. I think this is the page. Because I used that one for the... The russet so again sometimes I remember that I've got a certain color in a certain set and I think oh I kind of like that idea so this one it actually wants finishing so this set was 28 pounds and it gives you some nice palettes and you don't have to waste this color and um, if you can see possibly that's the russet color um, these two colors are the dragon's flames um, I think I've used it for another page but um, the green dragon is there so we've got greens and then we've got a bit of an orange colour I think this is from a different page this this is a gouache now I don't remember which one I used for gouache but this is my colour page for my gouache so one of my videos that has gouache on it, that's the palette. Um, because what I plan to do is to take these out of these big pans and put empty pans in here and then fill them with gouache. So it would be a little bit, um, there's professional ones and there's cheapy ones. Uh, but they kind of spread about a bit. Now it's fine if you're just doing a colour book and you want to play, but I'd like to have them in pans and so they're dried. Um, and I want to mix some of my own colours. So I'll be mixing some of my oranges, purples and greens in the pans while the gouache is from a tube. And then I will allow it to dry. So in one of these really nice sets, and if you're going to buy, it's not a... Um, a stay wet this is a stay wet and I actually prefer them to dry out on their own which I have another one so bear with me I think this is the one that's this is the one that has gouache and they've dried these were done at exactly the same time and these stayed wetter for longer because this is a stay wet it depends how you want to work the stay wet one has a wonderful extra palette so you've got double the, the real estate coloring if you didn't want to use them direct now the way to use them when they're dry is you spray them with a little spray bottle and then you leave them for a couple of minutes and then you can touch them and you can have a watercolor effect but with a gouache and there is a video how to do that and that again is another way of working with gouache to give a really nice effect. These are really dried and they crumble when they dry, but you can, I don't need to get them back into gouache, you can do, but I just need to spray them and then just touch. But that's for using them in a colour book, that's not to use them traditionally, gouache was for graphic designers. So there's two different ways to use everything that I use. I use them slightly different and drier for colour books. So any watercolourists out there will have a, a moment of type of, give them, uh, have a dicky fit because this is not how you use them. But it's how I use them 